Hi guys, welcome back to our second webinar on chatbots. Today we're going to talk about Q&A bot and a local development uh, environment. So we're going to have a quick look on how to actually extend everything we did last time. Who are we? We are four MVPs from Europe and luckily we all got renewed. So we're pretty proud to be part of the MVP 2020 cycle, 2019 cycle, 2019 to 2020 cycle. Um, so well, you probably remember us from last time. Uh, let's quickly focus on what we're going to talk about uh, about today. Well, a short recap of our last time. The last time we really focused on Q&A Maker. So what we did is we set up our Q&A Maker service. We created a knowledge base, and then we trained, test, and we find our knowledge base. So we did some samples, as you probably can remember. We tested it in Microsoft Teams, and well. Basically, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about local development. So what if you've created everything in Q&A Maker, you are where you are right now, and well, let's see if we can get some code. So, Rick, the floor is yep. yours. Yep, like uh, last time. So this was our knowledge base with our uh, normal uh, questions and answers that were in there. And we also added what's Tommy's nickname as our own question and answer. That's still in Microsoft Teams, so it's still running. So as you can see, I can say hi, and I can say what's Tommy's nickname, and normally you should find it. It's Tommy, of course. Okay, perfect. So that's still working. Now let's say we want to do something different, or we want to change it, or we want to add our custom uh, logic or custom development to it, then yeah, of course we first need our code. So uh, we can find our code if we go to the uh, Azure settings. Remember where we added our Q&A maker ID, I was here in the configuration where we added our Q&A maker ID and our endpoint. Those were the things we filled in last time. So if we go to build, then either we can open the online code editor, which is also pretty cool if you want to make a quick change. But yeah, we're going to download the code. So download bot source code. Then we get the entire source code. So we click. Do you want to include the app settings? Well, that makes it easier. You have to see in your context if you want that, but for us now it makes it a little bit easier because yeah, then I don't have to copy paste the secrets and the keys. So let's download this one. It will create a source zip file and download it to my hard drive. I, for the interest of speed, already did that one. So this is my office questions bot Q&A source. And when you extract that one, you get a Visual Studio solution. So if you open that one up, then you get your Q&A bot Visual Studio solution. Now there's a lot of stuff in there, so we'll go to it by one by one, because yeah, it has to yeah, it has to work. Bot's not that simply built up. So let's first build it, see if it works, because <laughs> Microsoft can say that you can download the files, but <laughs> that doesn't mean they have to work. So okay, build succeeded. That's already good. Now what's in there? This is a default uh, .NET Core app. So we have our www root, which is just our default page. So if we click play, that we see something. What's also in there? We have a bots folder where our Q&A bot is. This is actually yeah, the heart and brains of our Q&A bot. Here you can see this is the, the, the logic that happens. So Q&A bot will make sure that it goes to, as you can see here, it gets the Q&A knowledge base ID from the configuration and our authentication key and our host name. And whenever we say something, because uh, on message activity ain't sync, so if something comes in, then it will call the Q&A maker and actually, as we already said, the Q&A maker is just an API. So we're just calling an API and we're just saying, okay, this is what the user said. Now, please, can you provide us with a response? When a response is returned, if it's a valid response, we'll send that response back. If there's no response, then okay, no Q&A maker answers were found. But yeah, there's a lot more in there because yeah, this was just the one file. But with the bot framework v3, v4, it's a little bit different. We also have our bot controller that doesn't do that much. But that, as this one already shows, that this means that it's an API. So API slash messages, you can see that in the Azure settings. So if you go back to our configuration, you can see that, uh, I mean, our settings, there we go. You can see API slash messages. So this is the URL we get from Azure. And this is API slash messages. So this will make sure that this is rerouted to this controller, and this controller will process it. That's something that you get from the bot framework itself. The process async, it will send that to the Q&A bot. This will also make sure that if you have multiple bots in your solution, which is a possibility, 
that you can uh, create additional logic to send it to different bots. There's also a lot of, yeah, I wouldn't say garbage or <laughs> installation stuff in there from the deployment from the Q&A maker because we deployed it automatically to write immediately into, into Azure. So there's a prepare and build and run gulp and a build command and a deploy command and a publish command. This is all to make sure that the Q&A maker can automatically deploy it to Azure for you and that you automatically have within five minutes a working bot, a working Q&A bot. Uh, Rick, can you can yeah. you show us how how the code now is connected to our our knowledge base? Uh, I remember from last time that we have a, a had a connection uh, in the yeah. QA maker. We needed some uh, some GUIs and some IDs. And how does this work now in the in the code base? Yeah, as you can see, those those were the IDs. So app settings. Because I said yes, Microsoft Azure, please download them. So this is my app ID and my app password. Because yeah, we need an Azure app uh, app ID. And this is the things we filled in the QA knowledge base ID, which was five two the alt key, which was B, started with B7, and the endpoint offers questions Q&A. Remember from last time, this are the, these are the things if we click on publish. Yeah, I see this is our knowledge base ID, 5.2. And if we click on publish, then probably we should see the other keys like last okay. time. So we should see the alt key, and the uh, 5.2 was a knowledge base, and the endpoint was this one. So, so you put, this in, yeah, you put yeah. this in your settings. And then, of course, as you saw here, this will read it from the configuration. This configuration is also set up oh, set up in the startup.cs file, which will create the bot. Uh, yeah, will create the bot, make sure that it's running. It will start up the. It will hook everything together, as you can see here. Services. It will add a Q and A bot to the iBot. The iBot is something that Microsoft provides, which is in the bot framework. So as you can see here, if I go into the iBot, it will it will knows exactly that okay, the iBot is a Q and A bot. And it will start up. Configuration stuff looks like a, just a, like a regular uh, website or web web service web page thing. Yeah, it's a, the regular .NET Core uh, web API actually. Perfect. So it makes it not that difficult. Uh, the the web.config where we normally store uh, information that's uh, that's not existing anymore in .NET Core to I uh, yes, but for this one we're using the app settings.json file, and uh, there's also a readme file which will help you. If you're doing it running locally, Visual Studio, .NET Core, CLI, some information always interesting. Now, I think we want to run this bot, of course. We want to test it out. So let's just, I don't know, click play, see what happens. And then it starts building, and there we go. So normally we should see our default.html page, if I'm lucky. Good, yeah. Let's see. There yeah. we go. Yeah, oh, oh. perfect. So now, like it says here, yeah, you can test the bot in the bot framework emulator because, yeah, it's an API. So, yeah, if I go to API slash messages, yeah, that's not going to do that much. Let's <laughs> try it out. But, yeah, see, it's not going to work. So we need something that's called the bot framework emulator. I think Stefan can tell us a little bit about it while I show you how to find it. Yeah, well, basically, the bot framework emulator is a tool uh, provided by Microsoft and the bot framework team in order to, first of all, test bots locally. So you can test your bots running locally, or you can test um, bots which are running in Azure uh, on your machine and emulate a web chat uh, interface. And as you can see, uh, while Rick is scrolling down here, you can also debug your bot messages. So you can really get the full stack trace, uh, see which Lewis traces ha have been executed, what, you, what what messages you'll get back from Lewis or Q&A Maker and all the other connected services. So it's basically a tool for testing and debugging your bots before um, doing uh, adding them to a production use case. Yeah, and to download it, yeah, like everything nowadays, it's just on GitHub, and here you can download it. So I already did that. So bot framework emulator. There's also V3 and the V4. So we're taking the V4. Now we want to test it out, so let's say file, new bot probably, bot name, uh, Q&A, office, bot. Then my endpoint URL will probably be what I got here, so it already says that. And then, of course, we need a Microsoft app ID or a Microsoft app password. Now let's try it without, because we really want to do it locally. 
uh, if we fill this in, then correct me if I'm wrong, Stefan, then we go to the bot framework because without the app ID, without the app password, we cannot go to the bot framework because we're not authenticated, right? Yeah. So, right, but then you would have to change the endpoint URL to your Azure website as well. Okay. So normally this should work. So we're connected to localhost 3978 API message. It looks like we're connected. Let's see what it does. Okay, unauthorized. Now this is normal. Why? Because oh, was this no, no, no? Let's close this weapon coffee. Be why? Because we filled in the app settings. So the our emulator is not is going locally, but of course our bot is not going locally because we filled this in. So it thinks it has to go through the bot framework. So let's just delete this and delete this one. And there those settings came from the export from from Azure. So from the exports from Azure, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. that was uh, created automatically when we uh, deployed. I, I automatically created and deployed our bot. So let's see. If normally we should be connected now. Let's open it up again. There we go. And now we have our bot. So to make sure that I'm not lying, let's put a breakpoint here. So hi. Oh, what's make sure that's also connected to Q and A maker. So what's Tommy's nickname. There we go. And we have a breakpoint, so we're good to go. And as you can see, it will create a new QA maker. So this new QA maker, it comes from the Microsoft.botbuilder.ai.qA. So just a NuGet package you can install, which takes that configuration. It will do an HTTP, HTTP call and it will get the answer. There we go. And the answer was, there's a lot more information here. See, it's Tommy, of course, but also had an ID. It also had some questions that was in there, a score. That was the score we saw in the Q&A maker to make it. So this is how sure, it's 80% sure that it's correct. So that's probably correct. It's so only four out of five times. So four out of five. 80% <laughs> is only four out of five times. Yeah. yeah, it's not that much. Yeah. <laughs> that's maybe because I didn't type in the the mess, the uh, question exactly like we said it or something. So yeah. could be, and then it will send something back and there we go. Now I have my answer. And then like Stefan said, we can just click on uh, an answer or a question and then you can see what's going actually over the wire. You can see, okay, this is because it's an API, just JSON sending back and forth. So we send some channel data. The channel is of course the emulator. It's not in Teams, so there's no, no Teams client. Uh, there's no, uh, it doesn't. I'm not logged in, so it has no idea what my name is. So name user, the bot, of course, name bot, which is yeah, because we're using the emulator, a lot of stuff has to be faked or yeah, yeah, uh, mocked, yeah, mocked, yeah. So and here we can, we can see, okay, this is the actual text that's going on. It's a plain text format. It can also be a card, I'm guessing, yeah, an adaptive card or an image or stuff like that. You can upload or an attachment, as you can see here. I can upload an attachment. If you do this, of course, make sure that your bot is capable of processing attachments. And here, as we say, it's Tommy, of course. Then we see, okay, this is coming from a, it's Tommy, of course, service URL. That's uh, another, why is this, Stefan? Why did they add a service URL? Is it because, yeah, it's uh, linked to the, yeah, it, it, it runs on multiple ports, right? Yeah. Can I go there? Just test it out, I'm not sure. Test it out. No. Never been I'm there before. Pretty sure you won't see anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. does not exist, okay. Cool. But, but uh, to, to be totally clear, we, we are running the bot not locally, but although we are locally in terms of communications with the bot, your code that is still running in the background in Visual Studio reaches out to the cloud for uh, asking the Q&A maker. Oh? Yeah, yeah, you see that on the right side in the lock as well. Oh. You see the Q&A maker trace. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you basically can click on and would you oh, yeah, because uh, I didn't connect it, your so. emulator to the QA Maker service as well? You'll also see the whole, whole stack trace of the QA Maker um, connection. Oh, oh that's cool. So, so at this what one, it does so right now, you one, can basically oh, say, hey, oh, yeah, what's, what's that exact question? And as you can see here, you can even uh, alter your knowledge base right from the emulator. So you can add alternative uh, questions and answers in there. Um, you see the confidence score, so that's a pretty cool tool oh, in order to nice. test out not only the bot itself, but also the other cognitive services. Oh, that's pretty, that's really pretty cool. It's the, the iframe from the page from the Azure yeah. portal. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. You can even yeah, train and publish it from right from the emulator. Um, so that's that's pretty decent. What they uh, also that, that's that's Nick uh, that's Rick's favorite UI or the train and publish part. Yeah, this, what the why why why, yeah. why is this going big? But yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm already. Uh... <laughs> okay, they have to change the UI a little bit, but yeah. okay, that's uh, just uh, <laughs> that's my uh, weird self talking. But this is pretty cool. You can actually yeah, see what it's working at, add an alternate phrase and stuff like that. So this is actually pretty cool. This way you can really see what the bot is doing. And it's useful if you have connected Lewis and QA Maker to see which service is doing what and reaches out to, to whom. So you can basically understand what the whole connection thing is up to. Ah, yeah, like, because it's like uh, a, a real uh, yeah, service fiddler for, yeah. for those services. Yeah. yeah. Mm, pretty, yeah, because here you see, yeah, listening, then uh, connecting, edit ngrock settings, 201, message, trace, post, message, post. Okay, this is actually how the entire bot framework, because this is, I send up one, I said hi and I said a question, and this actually a lot of chatter, no? Yeah. This is actually yeah. more, because, yeah, I think it's something like this, then uh, this is the, something like this. Yeah. So, that's a yeah. back and forth of, it should be post method. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we send hi and then we go back with a post method and we said okay, okay. So this is a yeah, you see a lot of chatter going on for bots. That's a, a lot of API calls. Yep. Okay, so now we have this thing running locally. But okay, now we want to run it against the Q and A uh, against uh, the Azure web service or against our Azure service. So uh, let's just stop this one. So if I fill in the app settings here and here, and I take the same app settings, this should also work. So let me edit this one. Add the app ID and my password. There we go. Save. Let's do this again. Ah, oh, let's press play. Do this again. Then now we're doing the exact same thing, but now we're passing to the bot framework. Am I correct? See if it works. Still start waking up. Ah, uh, there we go. So it's still the same. Your breakpoint, yeah. Yeah, my breakpoint's been hit. Yeah, uh, takes a, a little while to go back to Q and A making. So okay, now let's say we want to. We have this running against the bot framework, but now we also want to make it running against our uh, endpoint or de debug our endpoint and get it running at the uh, uh, in the cloud. Actually, let's say we want to test it out against Teams, and okay, then we have a problem because Teams only talks this team only talks to something in the cloud, and this is running locally, so we need something to make a tunnel. So for that, we have ng rock. So don't look at this. This is all. Let's just remove this one. Oh, wait. I'll remove. I'll change this one. So we need something running in the cloud. I'll call this Q&A bot. And we were running on which service? This was... Oh, wait. I can find it here. There we go. So we need this one. Our port is here. It's HTTP. Uh, we have a subdomain. Wait, let me change something. Ah, we need to host that. That's correct. I already forgot that one. So make sure this is because um, this is a Python. So this is my uh, ngrock configuration file. So this is a Python st style file. So make sure you put it like this, not like this or this, so because then it's not working. So QA bot gave it a name. We gave it our address, HTTP. Let's give it a subdomain. I don't know. Webinar Q and A. You can choose whatever you want. And it was seven eight. I'm sorry. There we go. Seven eight. So if we save this and we go to ng rock, where is my ng rock? I think under tools. There we go. Command line. Instead of running, okay, I want to uh, to connect host header and to connect it to that port and connect with this URL, which is an entirely long command. We can just say ng rock start all and normally we should have something running with our Q&A bot there we go webinar Q&A so now we have an HTTPS endpoint connected to our HTTP localhost 
3978. So if I go and I take this URL and I go back to Azure and I change it to this one, wait, let me just to make sure that we have it. Oh, no, don't need it. Just where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And you lock here. There we go. This one. And we hit save. And then we don't want to make sure that we don't want to connect locally, but we want to connect in the cloud. So let's edit this one. Change the endpoint to this one, name online, save, let's close this one. Let's see if we are connected now. Say hi. And we have a hi back, that's already good. So it's pods already talking to us, but we didn't hit the breakpoint, so that's weird. But we did came into ng rock. That's weird. Well, mm. I'm not running. Okay. <laughs> First of all, press play. How can we get then some results? Yeah, that's weird. That's something. Webinar Q and A ng rock API messages. That's running e8. Is that correct? Yeah, but you you yeah. saw it in the in the command line that ng rock uh, got hit. Yeah. Post API messages and it gives back to another. Okay, maybe that's enough for high. Yeah, for the bot. Weird. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's say hi. Hi. Here we go. Here we are. Okay, that could be with. Uh, I have some issues with my uh, lately with my uh, latest update. My uh, IIS uh, Express server doesn't kill itself anymore, so it keeps on running even if I press stop, press stop in the uh, yeah, debugging mode. So could be that one. So here yeah, we are back. To, 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 to make it clear what, what happens here now, um, you use ng-rock, that's a tunneling software or something like that, or? Yep, yep, yep. It will make sure that um, something, so we get a URL from ng-rock. We can only choose this one if we want to, so the, the subdomain, and then .ng-rock.io, but they will provide an HTTP and HTTPS endpoint that's in the cloud that's available for everyone. So if you guys go to this one now, with this one, if I go here, then normally doesn't matter which browser. Let me take a new one. I should get see my same Q and A maker bot, which is actually just running this this, okay. this this page. It's running here. So to make sure that yeah, see Favicon not found, and every time something comes in, you can even see in in ng rock. Okay, but what's coming to is somebody calling my endpoint. This is because, yeah, if I say to Teams or Azure or whatever online cloud service, you need to go to local host, yeah, then it goes to local host in the cloud, which is, yeah. If you, yeah, if, if you can guess your chair with this, <laughs> yeah. that's it, uh, yeah. There's also a lot of local host servers, so. <laughs> You're never gonna find this, that one. This web interface with port 4040? If you, let me test that one out, so. This is a one, two, seven. Now, if I remember school correctly, this goes to myself. So let's see, try that one. And there we go. This is from NG Rock, where you get a yeah free fiddler because this is limited. You just see post API messages and 200 OK. This one is a little bit more extra because here ah, you can okay. also see what's going over, what was sent this way. We, what we, know, we know this one, right? So this is the same thing we see in the emulator as well. Yeah. Okay. So it's so again like yep. again the data that really goes over the wire or the information that really goes over the wire. Yeah. Cool. You can even see your tunnels, endpoints. Well, I can see a lot of request duration. So yeah. So uh, if you're struggling and you're stuck with something and you have no idea what's going on, then this thing is a lifesaver. Because then you know, okay, is is my endpoint being called? Is something working? Is uh, where's the Where's the hiccup in my code? Yeah. So is ng rock, ng -Rock free? Uh, it, you can, yeah, you can get it for free. You can pay for it. So if it's free, like we, we just shown, then it's free. The reason I pay for it is because uh, these 
um, URLs, those uh, subwebs. Um, so if you open ng Rock and you try to get webinar Q and A, then it's taken because I'm I have it. So if you want to make sure that you can um, you know use it whenever you want to, so you can uh, yeah. What's it called? So, so you pay for your unique subdomain, basically. Yeah, yeah unique subdomain that yeah. nobody else can. You can yeah reserve it, or it's only yours, and then nobody can use that one. So it's definitely worth paying for it because if you start any ng rock, it start it generates a new subdomain, and basically that's part of a GUID. So every time you would start ng rock, you get a new GUID, meaning that you would need to update a gazillion files if you're trying to do demos. Yep. So most of us right, that like are it. using it, well, are probably paying uh, a few bucks a month to uh, to do that. Yeah, if you start it like this regularly, just HTTP, then you get like this weird URL. Which is yeah now connected to my local host eighty, but you get us and then you have to change all your files. But you don't need to pay to get a, uh, a custom subdomain. You need to pay to reserve the subdomain. But true that. Sorry. There we go. And now we have. And uh, one other tip is okay. Always make a configuration file because this is lot a way lot easier than typing a, a whole lot of uh, ng rock commands. But I know it's cool that you type commands, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Q and A, yeah. Configuration but, file. But you're, you're still using the old command line, not the new Windows terminal. So. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have to download that one. Hey, <laughs> hey wait. I downloaded Ubuntu yesterday, so that's all, all for Windows. So that's a bit yeah. different. Yeah. Uh, I have it running somewhere here. There we go. See, I can do ls, <laughs> which means nothing. <laughs> there we go. Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> So uh, back to the Q&A bot. So um, now we're testing it out. We're running it locally. We're running it against Teams because now I changed it. So if I say in the Teams, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's just say hi. Simplest. Then there we go. Back in our breakpoint, so we can immediately directly debug from Teams. So we changed everything. We're good to go. Then we want, of course, to do a deployment. So let's stop this one to make sure that you believe me that the deployment normally if you don't find something it doesn't uh, if you say something weird it says no q a maker answers found let's change this one let's just say uh, this was a totally wrong question there we go so one more time test it out in teams i don't know a really wrong question i tried one here yeah slash clear so if i do this one there's totally nothing that looks like that. Yeah, we have to wait, of course, because I'm still starting it up. There we go. This will take a little. There we go. We're in our breakpoint. So let's make sure we're in our if statement. There we go. So this was totally wrong question. Should be. There we go. So this is working. Right, this was my super cool change that I needed to do. And now, of course, we need to deploy this one, which is pretty easy. We'll just click, right click, publish. Because I deployed, I got the, the information from Azure. There's also already a um, publish file, as you can see here, publish profile in there, which will just say publish. And then, of course, I need a password, which you can normally get from the publish profile if it's in there. Oh, uh, password's not in there. Really, where's my password? Then you get the password yourself, which means you have to go to the app server settings. Yes. Question QA bots. Here we go. App service. You get your published profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't download. Where are my downloads? Open this up, and here normally should be a password. As you can see here, use a password. Why didn't you remember that password? It's so yeah, easy. it's so super so easy. easy. <laughs> now let's publish this one. There we go. Publish. Good to go. This this publish now your locally uh, developed code to your Azure Web Service. As you can see, it's already starting up. So if I would have changed my HTML page, my default page, then you would see it here. But we can only see it if we talk to the bot. So one thing to really remember is we need, of course, to change the URL back because it's still 
linked to. Ah. So you need to go to the bot and make sure it doesn't target your local machine. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, we wouldn't see uh, the, the the changes. So this was Office Quest Kuno enabled dot Azure websites dot net. Save. Let make sure this is not running. Let me see. My IS is uh, there. We go. Kill it. Make sure that's not running. Normally, this shouldn't receive any information now. Is this doing? No. Oh. Just so. as a portal hiccup. Yeah. Happens sometimes. So, office question. Yep. Okay. Let's test it out in the web chat. See if the bot is still alive, of course. There we go. And see if our code change came through. This is oh. perfect. Cool. Cool. Same from Teams again. Wake up. Take some time in Teams probably to get through. There we go. Yeah, totally on question. Perfect. And to make sure this is not doing anything. So we still have something. Ah, that's posting, which is, of course, this one. It does uh, post every, every now and then. So this is running. So now we have a totally complete code change. Okay, it wasn't a big code change, but it was a code change to our Teams bot connected to our Q&A bot. But I think, uh, Stefan, you can also show something with... Um, how to do it in Azure DevOps, right? 